having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So I'm saying that we have a spiritual awakening. Well, our spirit was awakened when we became believers in Jesus Christ. But as we do this process, we start to see the awareness of that spirit because we see our spirit, and now we see God's spirit as we learn the word of God. So now we can see the two differences, the difference of the spirits. So it's awakened now. We're aware that there's another spirit living inside of us that can actually do some good and be of some service to people. But if we don't get rid of the old stuff, we're going to be of no good use to do the new stuff that God wants us to do. And this process helps us. I want us to go to Titus chapter 2. God was paying on me to read this about God's grace. Uh, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. This 12-step uh, process really prepares us for the work God has for us. 1571. Thank you. Thanks, you're welcome. I like the book of Titus. Look at what it says in verse 11. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And look at verse 12. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. While we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. He gave his life. Why did he give his life? To free us from every kind of sin. To cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committing to doing good deeds. You must teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary, so don't let anyone disregard what you say. And this whole ministry is based on that. We're instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures, right? While we look, and uh, we should live in this evil world with what? Wisdom, which is the, the God's wisdom, righteousness, living right, and devotion to God. See it right there? That's what, and this steps help us to get to that process, okay? And it's talking about, I want us to go now to um, Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 4, about talking the walk. Once we realize why God saved us, then there's a process that has to take place. It's called sanctification. And this process that we do down here in the step work is the process of sanctification that cleanses us out, lets us awareness of our sin nature and the awareness of God's nature so we can let God's nature operate. Let's read step 12. Talking the walk. When we realize everything we have gained by following the 12 steps, it will be natural to want to share this life-giving message with others. If we think back to the time before we entered recovery, we would probably recall that we didn't respond very well to preaching. Yet we also realize that there are people in our life who could be helped by our message. That is why we need to communicate our story, but do it with sensitivity. The Apostle Paul taught Timothy that to get the gospel message across, he was not only to teach others, but also be an example by putting his beliefs into practice. Paul said, give your complete attention to these matters, throw yourself into your tasks, so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a, keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation, and the salvation of those who hear you. 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16. When we practice the principles of the 12 steps, others will be watching and noticing the changes. This will open the doors for us to share our story. Every, no, this says addict, but every sinner, this is what really it is. Every sinner is a precious lost soul from whom God loves and wants to rescue. If someone among you wanders away from the truth, Whoever brings the sinner back will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. 
James 5, 19 to 20. The world recognizes things as addiction, okay? But we know what it really is. It's sin. It's our sin nature. But the world sees it as an addiction. So they don't know that they even have a sin nature because they don't know God yet. They're not saved. So you can't tell them, well, that's just your sin nature operating. They're not going to... They're going to say, what are you talking about, sin nature? They don't even know what a sin nature is. They don't even know that they're being controlled by the devil. Yeah. So we have to relate to them on their level. That's why this process goes both ways. We want to be able to do this for the believers that are already saved so they can grow spiritually and be in service. And we want to catch some souls that aren't saved yet do the other way. Right. So it's kind of like a bridge. Yeah. But you have to, but first we have to become what God wants us to become so we can be that light. And we can actually live by an example that people are attracted to. Yeah. Say, wow, well, you're really handling that well, you know. What, what did you do? Well, you know, I just put my faith in God and I, you know, did some of the work I had to do and, and God changed me and now I can be calm in the storms. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, we can tell them about Jesus. And this, you know, people tell you well, all the things they do to, to get uh, gratification. We can tell people what we do. We pray, right? Amen. I have an example. Uh, I tried to tell my ex girlfriend about Jesus, and I was put down repeatedly yeah. Yeah. last Friday. Yeah. And I just ignored, I just had to ignore the message after a while. But she told me that Jesus, what is he doing in this world of coronavirus? If he was for real, this wouldn't be happening. Mm. But I, I kept calm. I would lose my temper in the past. Yeah. I, this time. I actually yeah. had a call Andrew to talk to him. To, right. Take a deep breath and relax. Exactly. We have, we have to understand that word, Jesus. When you mention Jesus to people that are being controlled by the devil, yeah. they just can't accept it. So you can't talk about Jesus. This is what we do this process for. You can actually be like Jesus. You, can, you don't even have to mention his name. All you have to do is show his character to your girl, and then she'll see something different about it. And then you can get Jesus in there. What's that? You didn't get mad, yeah. yeah but you didn't get mad, exactly. Oh, a lot of people get really offended. Even Christians get offended when they tell people about yeah. well, Jesus, they don't want to hear it. Yeah. They start snapping at it. Yeah. They don't even know Jesus yet. They don't even know they're being possessed by, controlled by the devil. Yeah. You can be controlled by two forces in this world, good and evil. Yeah. And they're controlled by, yeah, I, I didn't even know I was following the devil when I was in the world. Right? I didn't know. They don't know either. So they don't think there's anything, they're saying, why is the coronavirus this that? Because people don't recognize that they're sinners, yeah. that, you know, that we live in a fallen world that's going to have stuff like this. They don't think there's anything wrong with it. Why, is, why would Jesus let that happen to me? Right? Because I'm a good person. Because yeah. <laughs> they don't even recognize that they have a sin nature. Yeah. So you can't get to them that way. You can't mention Jesus to them because they, they think it's a bunch of baloney. Because they don't know Jesus. Because they think Jesus should be like, okay, Jesus is the guy that's supposed to take all this away. We're supposed to live happy life ever after that. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know the real Jesus. They know the Jesus that the, the Bible, oh, people give the false impression of who he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, he, he said the only thing he does is helps us get through this. He doesn't say he's going to take it away. Yeah. Psalms 91. Yeah. Right. But there's, a, there's an attachment to that. If you, you, if, if you make the Lord your refuge, Nothing wrong. It's not going to happen. You can't say, well, just read Psalm 91 and, you know, you're going to be good. You have to understand it. You have to make the Lord your refuge. You have to accept Jesus. Yeah. And then make him your refuge. It doesn't work for just anybody. Yeah. It works for believers who put their trust in him. Amen. Then you won't get one. You know what I mean? You can't just pluck it out of the context because it doesn't work for everybody. It works for people who believe and trust it. Amen. It definitely works for me. It comforts me because I know the word of God is true. What he's saying is talking to me. But other people might not understand that. All right, let's read chapter 4. We're going to... Warnings about false teachers. Look at chapter 4, 1 Timothy. Now, the Holy Spirit tells us clearly that in the last time, some will turn away from the true faith. They will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Okay? These people are hypocrites and liars, and their consciences are dead. Now, we know that when we go in the Word of God, we're not listening to anything but the Word of God. So when you deviate from this, it's saying, it says that they're going to what? Follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. 
There's no teachings in this Bible that come from demons. They're talking about they're reading other materials that come from demons that explain this improperly. That's why we don't deviate from this. This is good enough. God will speak to us. This is, this is coming right from God himself. Why would you want to hear it from someone else? That's why we stick to the Bible. They will say it's wrong to be married or wrong to eat certain foods, but God created those foods to be eaten with thanks by faithful people who know the truth. Since everything God created is good, we should not reject any of it, but receive it with thanks. For we know it is made acceptable by the word of God in prayer. Now he's talking about being a good servant. If you explain these things to your brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and the good teaching you have followed. Do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Think about that. Train yourself to be godly. That's what we're doing in the step room. Yeah. We're training ourselves to be godly. And look how empty the room is. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to do that part. I don't want to train myself to be godly so I can be a service to God. I want to be a service to God without training myself to be godly so I can miscommunicate Jesus and trip everybody up and then nobody's going to come to him. Yes. Because they're not training themselves to be godly. It's telling them what to do. Look what it says. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So if we train for godliness down here, not only are we going to get rewarded down here for training for godliness, but we're going to get rewarded in heaven too. Amen. Now look what it says. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle, for our hope is in the living God. See it? Who is the Savior of all people, and particularly all believers. Teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Be an example to all believers. Listen to what he says here. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith, and your purity. See it? So he's saying... Be an example to all believers in what you say, what comes out of your mouth, in the way you live, see it? In your love for others, showing love for your faith, and in your purity. Until I get there, focus on reading the scriptures to the church. See what he says? Focus on reading the scriptures to the church, encouraging the believers, and teaching them. Don't neglect the spiritual gift you receive when the prophecy is spoken over you, when the elders of the church laid their hands on you. Now look what it says. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks. See it? So that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. And that wraps up why we do the steps. Right. right here. Keep a close watch on how you live, on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation. Because this keeps an eye on how we're living, the step work. Yeah. The Bible just tells us about Jesus. But it doesn't tell us, when you go to church, it doesn't tell you how to live. This is telling us, this keeps an eye on what's going on with us. So we can be a service to the Lord. Yeah. So we can keep ourselves pure. Amen. This keeps purifying us. Right? The Word of God purifies us. And we get rid of that sin nature as we keep doing this process. Yeah. But you can't have any effect for God's the kingdom of darkness when you're still full of it. Right. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. There's no impact on the kingdom of darkness when you still have tons of darkness in you. But people will see the light when they know that you've been freed of all that. Mm -hmm. You can be a living example to them. Like I said, you can be patient when somebody mocks Jesus. People mock Jesus all the time where I, where I am. They, they, his, name, they, his name comes out so natural to unbelievers, but in a bad way. They all know it. Yeah. They all know that name. Everybody mentions that name when yes. they cuss him. Yes. That's the first name that comes up. They don't say, Muhammad. <laughs> they don't say that. How did that, how did that stop? They always mention Jesus Christ. That's what yeah. you hear all the time. And they use it in a far way. Why? They never say, oh, Gandhi. 
They don't even mention them, yeah, right? No, no, that the devil tricking people. That's the devil, yeah. yeah, they're possessed by the devil, exactly. Right. And they're mocking Jesus Christ, exactly. Right. They know Jesus, but they don't know Satan's controlling them. Yes. Yeah. See, so they know of Jesus, they just don't have Jesus, you know what I mean? So this is the example for us to give them Jesus, the true Jesus that has been stained so badly in Christianity yeah. today that they don't even understand. They don't even, you go one place to tell you a different Jesus, then another Jesus from this church, and this Jesus tells you this way, and that Jesus does this thing. Yeah, right. Instead of the Jesus of the Bible, that's right. that loves everybody, Amen. and he died for us, and he changed me, and he wants to live his life through me, and he wants me to be like him when I approach other people so they can see him. Yeah. Amen. They don't want to hear, they don't want to hear about Jesus. The world does not want to hear about Jesus right now. They want to see him. And the problem is, believers don't have enough of them in them, in them, to the people to see them, see him. Because they're still full of darkness and sin. And they're still living the lifestyle that they lived before. Yeah. The Bible says we have to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. Yeah. And that's what this helps us do. That's why we do this process. Amen. Right? And that's why you want other people say, well, I don't need, I don't need, this is why the steps are tainted, right? I don't, you know, I don't understand, I don't need a 12 step. I don't, I'm not addicted to drugs and this and No, you're addicted to sin. That's you right. need the 12 steps. You need to go through this process and say that you can't get rid of your sin nature. You can't get rid of your anger, your bitterness, your resentment, your, your, your jealousy. It just doesn't go away. You need this to help you get it away. See, everybody thinks it's an outward thing. No, it's an inward thing. The world thinks, well, if I just put drugs down, my life is going to get better. Really? It might get a little, it might get better because, you know, living a drug-filled life is definitely going to put you in a lot of problems. But the problem is still going to be there after you put the drugs down. You're still going to have anger, bitterness, lust, right? You just jump from one thing to another. It's all sin, right? You've got, like, so many different um, anonymouses, right? Um, Overeaters Anonymous, um, Narcotics Anonymous, Alcohols Anonymous. Anonymous this and anonymous that. And it's like all sin, you name it. Sin anonymous. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't drink alcohol anymore, but instead I gamble instead. Now I don't do that, but now I just, I got full of lust and I turn to porn. Right. Yeah. So it's all sin. The Bible calls it all the same thing. All the things they have an anonymous program for is sin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we know the word of God is true. Yeah. But they want to handle sin their way. So I just want to put this sin down. But I still want these. It's okay. As long as I put this one down, I can have all the other ones. Yeah, come here. We cover it all. Yeah, this <laughs> covers the whole gamut. Yeah, this covers it all. This, is, this, this covers it all. So when you jump, when you stop putting the drugs down and start jumping to sex, we take care of that problem. Yeah. We take care of that when you jump to that. So you jump to Jesus. Amen. 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 So you finally jump to Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Right? This is what this, this, what this program is. Look at the room. It's empty. It's like, we want all the other vices. You just don't want, want, you know, I'm going to take care of it. This is my problem. <laughs> Once I put that down, everything's going to be good. Don't you wish life was that easy? Yes. So that's why. There's no truth there. That's a lie. That's what it is. It's a lie. I say, you're, you're going to do better. You know, oh, yeah, look, I got a good job. I got good clothes. That's cool. That's nothing. Anybody can get that back. How about getting rid of your anger issues and your jealousy and you snapping at people because you had a bad day. I'm going to give somebody, you did that to me, can I do that to you? How about all that stuff to revive them back? All that sinful stuff that's all that's nothing. That's okay. Just don't drink. Yeah. That's what they teach you. Yes. So nobody thinks they have to do anything else. So why would I have to do anything else? All I got to do is go there. Because that's the problem. No, sin is the problem. Jesus Christ is the solution, and the result is a miracle. Amen. So when you go out there, that's the truth that delivers us. So we should not be embarrassed to tell them that it was Jesus that delivered us. Amen. If they want to say that, because let me tell you something now, those things are all shut down right now. They, they can't, God. If they're using them programs as God, where is he now? Where are they now? Those, those programs are closed. You can't meet, you can't meet. Uh, speaking of liquor stores, they had an old time bring it high. You know, yeah. <laughs> There you go. There you go. You see, you see where the world is. They're saying the liquor store is an essential, but the church isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you know 
that the world is backwards. That's so true. It's so true. Because people are going to that spirit instead of God. Yes. This is going to give me comfort. I need a couple cases of this. Like all these spirits. Yes. Exactly. It says wine in, wine in spirits. It doesn't say wine in God's spirits. No, because after you drink that bottle of wine, God's spirit ain't coming out anymore. This is true. The Bible says don't get drunk with wine because it'll ruin your life. And the believers sit on the fence with it. Well, I don't really know what being drunk is, but I like to have a couple of drinks here and there. Okay. So you just want to stay on the fence with it, you know? Let me tell you something. Sin is... Sin, sin, you want to sin, uh, You want to stay on the fence with sin? Let me tell you something. Sin will find you out and you go over the fence. Yeah. Sooner or later. Because, remember he said, you have lack of self-control. That compromises your morality. Once you put that in substance inside of you, it, it, it sears your conscience and things start happening that you wouldn't have did if you didn't do that. Yeah, you have to understand that. We get possessed by another spirit. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I want to be possessed by Jesus. Amen. It's a beautiful thing. All right, let's go to um, tight, back to Titus now. I want to share this. This is good. Back to Titus. Um, 1571. Yeah, Titus, um, never forget. Chapter 3. Look at, look at step 12, never forget. See it? It's on page 1571. Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to others and to practice these principles in all our affairs. As we get further along in recovery, the memory of how bad our life really was may begin to fade. Do we vividly remember what we once were? Can we humbly recall the dark emotions that filled our soul? Do we have true compassion and genuine sympathy for those to whom we try to carry the message? When we take the message of recovery to others, we must never forget where we came from and how we got where we are. Paul told Titus, once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. But when God our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. Titus 3, 3 to 5. As we share our message, let us never forget the following truths. We were once a slave, just as others are today. Our heart was filled with confusion and painful emotions that others still feel. We were saved because of the love and kindness of God, not because we were good enough. We must also remember that we can stay free because God is with us, upholding us every step of the way. Amen? Amen. So we have to understand that if we're not free, how are we going to help set someone else free? This is the process of sanctification, and we have to get free from that sin nature so we can help other people get set free. But if we're not free of it, how are we going to set anybody else free of it? Mm -hmm. Look at um, chapter 3. Let's read, do it, let's do what is good. See it? Titus. I'm going to do a study of Titus. Come. Remind the believers to submit to government and its offices. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone. Avoid quarreling. And, and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility for everyone. Once we too were foolish and disobedient. We were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth, a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out His Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Because of His grace, He declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that, everyone, so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to doing good. You see it? Here it is again in the Bible. 
Devote yourself to doing good. These scriptures ain't taught in the churches anymore. You're saved, so you devote yourself to God and doing good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. Don't get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or quarreling in fights about obedience to Jewish laws. These things are useless and a waste of time. If people are causing divisions among you, give a first and second warning. After that, have nothing to do with them. For people like that have turned away from the truth and their own sins condemn them. People get into spiritual fights all the time. And the, this is what the world sees in Christianity today. I believe this. I believe that. This is that. No. We believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior and the Word of God to be the written Word of God. That's what we believe. And that's what we should all stick by. But no, that's not what's happening out there. People get swayed by every wind of new teaching, this, that, and the other thing, instead of just sticking to this book. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Go ahead. Well, what does it mean when it says to submit to government and officers? That means, I get that. Well, you can't, in other words, you can't be like a thief. We're, we're supposed to submit to the, in other words, if we're supposed to obey. God put the government in order for us, for our good, okay? So if it's, if any, if the government is causing us to disobey God, then we don't follow it. But everything else that the government does, we're supposed to what, pay our taxes, do the right thing. We're supposed to follow the government, well, what they, they do. They organization, What's that? The government? I've done a lot of research on them. That this whole bone society is really satanic stuff they do. No, well, it says right here. Submit to the government and its offices. When they were in, when the when the when the Jews got um, um, captured and went to Babylonia, what did God tell them to do? He told them to be obedient to them if they wanted to make it through mm -hmm. to their government. Because if we don't follow the government, you're going to end in jail. You can be a Christian all you want. Of no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have to follow. Yeah. You know what's right and wrong. We know what the Word of God says and what's right and wrong, right? Yeah. So well, that's what we follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there'll be chaos if there was no law. Exactly. If there was no law, there'd be chaos. You know what I mean? If you, uh, the Bible says He didn't come to take away law; it came to fulfill it. You stay. You stay. The, the reason why you stay 55 on the highway is so other people don't get hurt, and you can stop before you hit somebody, yeah. so you can save lives. That's what it's about. But when the government tells you, oh, you can't worship the Lord, then we're talking about the Antichrist coming to power. They don't tell us that we can't go to church or worship. You know what I mean? So we're to follow it to the best of our ability. And so some people get tripped up on that and say, well, the government's from the devil. Well, the, the, the Bible, they were a theocracy at one time, but they wanted a king. And ever since then, we've had kings yeah. rolling over us because that's what they wanted. They didn't want to get ruled by God. Read the Old Testament, it tells you. We want a king like all the other nations do. If you want a king, they're going to oppress you, take your money, and rob you. We still want one. Yeah. There's Guess a podcast what? you can listen We've to. We've been suffering from that ever since. Yeah. Like because we don't want to be run by God. Before that, that was judges. Remember, they were judges. Yes. They used God as the judge. Mm -hmm. You know. So that's why we have to be obedient to him. But because... So you say you're a Christian, right? You walk out the door and draw a rock to a window and say, I'm saved and I don't have to obey the law. Oh, yeah. You're going to jail. Of course. You know what I mean? So that's what they mean. You, know, you have to use common oh, sense of what, what they're talking about. Of course we have to be obedient. The laws are put in place for our protection. But not to, um, whenever, whenever it tells you to compromise God, then we don't follow that. That's when okay. it might come to that point someday when it said, look, you can't, you can't worship anymore in God. When that comes, then there's going to be trouble. And they say the days are going to get dark like that. Well, we can't gather. We might have to gather in houses again. Mm. Have to sneak in. Yeah. But there's no way we're going to stop. Yeah. If you're a true Christian, you're not going to stop doing it. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. It's burning inside you to do it, you know? So there's a fine line there. We can talk about that at another time. We'll, we'll get into that more. But anyway, you understand what the step process does? It prepares us to be a beacon of light out there. Most people try to be a beacon of light when they're still dark. You, it doesn't work. It's like turning the flashlight on right without the batteries in it and trying to shine light. There's no light there. It's still darkness. All right, so we're going to answer some questions now. Thank you for letting me share that. Just get a little concept of why we do this work. 